What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a build that can one hit kill anything in the game that I've come across, literally even the biggest enemies that I'll show you an example of right now before we get started. It's a bow build and I'm going to be going over the armor weapon I'm using. They're all very accessible even early on in the game. You can work your way towards it and I'll show you how to get all the materials to craft these weapons and this armor set and so on and especially if you're struggling i think this is actually like a super good build to play the game with though granted it is it's extremely easy as i'll show you um so down here we have a very rare enemy you can see uh, in the distance and i'm going to show you that i can actually kill this guy with with one hit so we're using this skill called piercing shots and i'll show you where to get this in a moment but basically it's a strong shot that goes through enemies and hits other foes behind them, but most importantly, it inflicts extreme bleeding, which is just a ridiculously powerful ability. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim at this creature, which is just down there. I'm going to press R when he stops. Now we've inflicted extreme bleeding on him. Now, obviously, I'm so far away and I'm sneaking, so he has no idea I'm even here. Uh, and I'm just going to warm myself up by the campfire and sit and wait. Because very slowly, or he's actually going to come up here and try and check, you know, what, what just attacked him. And we might need to move because this guy will literally, one hit takes away half your health. And he has some abilities that slow you as well. It's like a, a secret creature that seems to spawn uh, randomly around the world. Uh, it's one of the more difficult creatures to kill in the game. And I'll, I'll give you some examples later on of this as well. He's coming up here now. So I'm actually going to back away here. Um, oh, oh, I think he could have spotted me. We're good. Yeah, you see, look, he's bleeding to death. He's actually, he's just going to die soon. I've only hit him once. <laughs> he doesn't know I'm here. Which is a good thing, because... Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. He's just going to die in any second now. Slowly. Yep, there he goes, he's dead. <laughs> he's fallen down the mountain. The most unelegant death of the epic enemy in the game. And that's what I mean. This build is stupidly powerful. Like, as long as you can wait it out... Um, you know, you can kill anything in the game. Um, let's slide down this mountain here and loot the Wendigo. Cold stone, Ocalot remains, predator bones, and small sapphire. Awesome thing to kill. And this works on everything, guys. It's so ridiculously powerful. And um, I'll go over everything in this video, so let's get started on exactly how this works. The gameplay of this build, though, is effectively to shoot something, inflict bleed, and then to run around and kite it until it's dead. You can carry on killing it with arrows to kill it faster, but you, you don't need to. <laughs> you can just sit there and wait. It's kind of crazy. So you're going to start the game here in Sirzo, and what you need to do is you need to come all the way past the Conflux Mountain, over here to this arrow which will take you to the end Merka forest so you can see the conflux mountain over there and in the distance you can see the gate to the forest and you're going to need free travel rations to make that trip but it's through this arrow there and once you go through there it will take you to the next map so once you are in the ember maker forest your map will now look like this you've just entered from this top left arrow here and now you need to follow this path to the right and past the docks to this place called the City of Berg. Now, you can easily get here without encountering any enemies and just being careful along your path. Um, you don't need to fight anything to get here. You can go do it quite early on. And once you do arrive, and the main quest can bring you here anyway, you'll, you'll get to the city gates, and this is where I am now. You can see behind me that lake for a reference. You can see the bridge over there as well, and the docks just there to my right. So we're going to head on inside the city and the merchant we need to talk to is a skill trainer. He's going to teach us this extremely powerful skill. So welcome to the city of Berg and on the right here is the guy you want to talk to, the hunting trainer just here. What can I do for you? I would like to train with you, sir. So he's got a bunch of skills. I've already unlocked everything here. Now, one of these skills you're going to actually have a choice. You can only choose one of them, uh, which is why, you know, these videos are really useful, these sort of walkthrough guides I make, because I tell you about this stuff so you don't make the wrong decision. But you have Predator Leap and Piercing Shot. Now, even though my character is kind of mainly a melee build, this skill is too powerful to pass up. 
It's called Piercing Shot, as I said, and I believe it costs 600 silver. Um, if you don't know how to make easy money, I've already made walkthrough videos on exactly how you can do that. And 600 silver might seem like a lot, it's quite easy to get. Now, it obviously requires a, a bow to use this skill. The alternate skill you could get instead of this is Predator Leap. Now, this, I don't recommend you go for it because unlike the Piercing Shot, Predator Leap uh, is pretty cool. But it requires the Rage Boon. And basically, it makes jumping attack that creates a shockwave upon landing with a high impact and damage. But it requires the Rage Boon to use. So every time you use it, you need to have the Enrage Boon activated so you can actually pull off this skill. And I, I don't really like that kind of play style. So personally, Piercing Shot is just the way to go, man. It can really help you out in certain boss fights and situations. Um, so I recommend getting this anyway. And just so you know, guys, this will even work with a simple bow, which only does 23 damage and 12 impact. But the thing is about this is it's still going to give that skill effect major bleeding, which is the only thing you need to kill anything in the game. But I will show you how to craft a better one. So in order to find that bow, guys, we're going to go and run over to the blacksmith. Um... The best bow you can get is from this guy. Hey there. And we're going to browse his shop. And he has some crafting things here. And one of the crafting things is the Coral Horn Bow. Teach us how to craft equipment. Now, it costs 35 silver to buy this, but you don't need the crafting recipe. I can just, you know, show you exactly how to craft it without the crafting recipe. Because in this game, the way the crafting system works is anything you slot into here will always produce the same item. So you can literally look it up on Wikipedia if you don't want to buy it. Hey but I'm just saying, if you want to, it's there. Now, in order to craft this bow, though, you're going to need two coral horn antlers, which I'll show you how to get in a moment, the recurve bow, which you can buy from the blacksmith I just showed you, and also some crystal powder, which is very easy to obtain. I'll talk about that in a moment, but firstly, let's talk about the coral horn antlers. So at this point, guys, you should already have the piercing shot equipped in your skill. I'm going to go ahead and equip that right now. So in order to find this material, guys, it's pretty simple. We've just left the city of Berg here, and we're going to walk across this bridge here. Um, you're going to find some bandits that usually spawn across here as well as some deer as well. So do take care of the bandits especially. I want to take them out right now. Right, so after you've taken out the bandits, head across this bridge and just carry on running south in this direction. I'll show you on the map again as soon as we get to the location where you find the deer. But just head over to that bridge in distance there. So as you carry on here, you're going to come across a hidden little treasure chest on the left just behind this wall make sure you grab that and you're also going to find some random deers across around this area but i've already killed them so i'll show you another spawn point in a moment you guys can see there's some bodies of the deers i kill killed earlier but um don't worry these deers are very common in this area and they respawn every few in-game days so you can harvest them and sell the antlers if you don't need them as well and eventually you will find these deers here as you can see, there is always an alpha male, like a red one, with these deer. So you're going to whip out our bow, and we're just... And you're going to go ahead and aim, and we're going to use our skill shot with the R key. And that's hit him right there. So now what we're going to do is... I didn't mean to fire that one. We're just going to wait it out. I don't know where he's actually gone. I think he's trying to figure out how to get up here. I can't... See, oh, he's just down there. You can see him. Look. Look how rapidly his health is being drained. You can obviously follow through and carry on shooting him with arrows, or you can just run away and carry on dodging him, but he's going to be down in a few seconds. Literally. And there we go. He died. And that's it. That's all we need to do. The these ones drop alpha meat, and they also drop the coral horn antlers as well. And now we have two of them, I can show you where to get the other ingredients, guys for the coral horn bow here. So next we need some crystal powder. This is also really easy to get guys. All we need to do is go to the Conflux Mountain and you can get crystal powder by first mining mana stones, which are all around the Conflux Mountain here at the start of the game, just here on the map. And you start in Sierzo, obviously. So you're gonna to come to the mountain, you're gonna like just walk up the mountain, you'll find lots of these mining deposits and you effectively just need four of them. 
so make sure you bring a mining pick with you. You can also buy them from the mage and any other mages in the cities, but obviously that's going to be much more expensive. Um, and it's always good to mine extra of this because it's always nice to sell as well um, for some extra gold. But we're just going to go around and mine the mana stones until we have four of them. And I think there's another one down here to the left. Yes, just here. Fantastic. So set up your alchemy table once you have all your mana stones. You can buy an alchemy table from most mages or alchemists in any major city. The one down there sells it for about 60 silver. And then we're going to use our alchemy kit and we're going to combine four mana stones. You don't need the recipe for this, obviously. And it's going to create crystal powder just like that. So now we have our crystal powder and that's the final ingredient we need to craft our bow. Huzzah. So go ahead and craft your coral horn bow. It does 30 damage and 16 impact damage and it also inflicts pain, which makes your enemies take even more damage from your additional attacks after that. And this bow is actually, in my opinion, better than the war bow. The war bow you can buy for a thousand silver. And it actually does 32 damage, so more damage than the coral horn bow. And it has an impact of 30. It also does confusion, which basically makes the enemy more vulnerable to impact damage. So the war bow is basically much better for staggering your enemies, but not as good for overall damage. It's much more situational, in my opinion. And then later on, guys, in my opinion, this is the best bow in the game, the horror bow. Now, I'm not going to show you guys where to get the materials for this bow in this video because it's not really like a starter weapon. But in my opinion, it's the best bow in the game. And I thought I'd mention it because the horror bow only have, has a damage of 29, but it actually inflicts extreme poison on enemies. So like extreme bleeding inflicted from the skill, extreme poison is effectively the same thing. So you're going to drain their health twice as fast and it just lets you kill things twice as fast and it's ridiculously overpowered once again. But obviously this weapon is quite inaccessible to those people early on in the game. So I just wanted to mention it, but again it honestly you don't need it because the extreme bleeding is already like overpowered enough if that makes sense but i just wanted to mention it anyway so the next thing i want to go over guys is our armor set and we're using a full set of the master trader armor because it's literally like it's such a good set for an archer now arguably i think there could be better sets if you're trying to use this build in a dungeon because that's where it's quite difficult and you really do need to rely on kiting but the master trader garb is insanely good for anywhere outside and just adventuring in general because it basically in total it gives you minus 30 percent stamina reduction so whether you're sprinting you're dodge rolling under enemies attacks or just running around and adventuring it's going to reduce your stamina cost and of all the skills you're using it will also reduce the stamina cost of those as well 30 percent is just huge benefits and it's also going to increase your movement speed by a total of 25%. And I'll show you guys an example in a moment to compare the difference between wearing this armor and not wearing it. But the movement speed you get with this armor is insane. Especially 30% plus sprinting as well is just ridiculously fast. In fact, you can outwalk most enemies just by like walking away from them. And it makes it super easy to kite them. So to give you an idea, guys, this is the standard walking pace right now. And it's it's quite quick compared to the... I've got a side-by-side -side comparison so you guys can obviously see. And then when we get to this bush, I'll start sprinting. And now we can see there's a big difference on the sprint. And especially considering you're using up... You're burning your stamina a lot slower because of your, your um, reduction to stamina cost. So that's also pretty damn useful. And as for the other stats, the resistances, it, it's a light armor effectively. It gives you a slight resistance so you can take a few hits, but it is not, you know, ideally you don't want to be getting hit at all while wearing this armor set. It's very easy to get a hold of. In fact, you can get many of these things from chests even at a low level in the game. Or you can also buy them from the traveling merchant or some of the store merchants in cities, which I'll and show now, you now. My mic As you are traveling, you will also come across this secret trader. And this trader is, he's on every single area Greetings, of the world. Um, he's a caravanner. So you can actually buy something from him and he's going to sell you random items, including the merchant's outfit the trader outfit. You're also usually going to find other caravanners, like for example, the one in Berg or Sirzo. 
and this um, me. they're also going to sell some trader outfits as well, like the Master Trader hat, the Master Trader boots. These for days. Where this build struggles though is like this inside dungeon spaces in tight corridors where you have no room to move and aim. This is why I suggest checking out my melee build counterpart so you can pop your foe with an extreme bleeding penetration skill shot and then either block or finish them off in melee, especially for the more hard enemies in the But in the open, I mean, as you saw at the start of the video, it's so easy. You can literally just sneak around and the enemies won't even know you've attacked them. You know, you can just, it's ridiculously easy. I really do enjoy the dodging playstyle though of this build and just like shooting someone with bleed and then dodging around them and pelting them with arrows until they die. But it is no doubt an extremely easy way to play the game and for some I think it will remove the challenge of it and be, you know, a bit boring after a while. So a word of warning before you do use this build for yourself, it does get quite old and especially if you have to wait for them to just bleed to death, it makes a lot of the enemy encounters just dull in my opinion. But um, try it out and see what you guys think for yourself. And if you do enjoy it, please go ahead and subscribe and check out my Outward playlist, which has my whole walkthrough and all my other build videos inside it. And also some unique weapon videos that I'll be uploading in the next few days. I've already played through a lot of the game and now I've got loads of ideas that I just want to share with you and lots of really fun ways you can play and combine different things together. But thank you so much for watching me ESO. And I'll see you guys in the next Outward video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.